It's Red Skelton. Brought to you by Geritol. Geritol, the remarkable new tonic that helps you feel stronger fast, brings you the comedy program that helps you feel happier fast, The Red Skelton Show. With the King Sisters. And David Rose and his orchestra. And starring Red Skelton. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's always, you know, it's always surprising to walk out and have people to applaud, and you've never even done anything yet, you know. A lot of people actually are afraid to applaud. It gives away the business they're in. Did you ever notice that? A stenographer, they applaud this way. You know. <laughs> people from Pasadena. <laughs> Barbers, they applaud like this. <laughs> you know, oh, speaking of applauding, I played a theater once up in San Francisco, and uh, I walk out, and, I, and they have white foot lights, white border lights, and a white spotlight. And you can't see a thing. If the microphone had been chrome, you wouldn't have even seen that, you know? So I go out, and I do my act, and there's not a sound. Not one whimper in the audience. So I walk off, and the stage manager says, take a bow. I says, do what? He says, take a bow. So I walk out, and I bow, and I come back off, and he says, do an encore. I says, do an encore. Nothing's happening out there. So I walk back out, and I do something else. Now, with actors, when they start to lay an egg, that flop sweat comes out. <laughs> so again, nothing is happening. So as I walk off, he says, take another bow. I says, would you do me a favor? I don't even believe there's anybody out there. Throw up the house lights, will you? So as I walk out, they throw up the lights. Whole audience, Chinese going. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a great, great uh, honor uh, that's been bestowed upon me. And now I'd like for you to meet a fellow that really I'm very proud to be associated with. You've seen him quite a bit on the Ed Sullivan Show, and it's Ed Sullivan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Red, it's mighty nice to see your smiling face again. Really, it is. Yeah, well, that's more than I can say for you. <laughs> now, don't give me that. Don't give me that smile. You, you know that I can smile. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> this boy's a real Liberace, you know. What are you talking about, Liberace? There is a real serious smiler. Now you're not kidding. You know, the other night Liberace played a concert and his piano didn't show up and he played his teeth for a half hour. <laughs> Here in, uh, in uh, California. Well, I came out to look for some new acts. Some new acts? Mm -hmm. Say, I know a boy that does a trapeze act and he'll travel. Daryl Zanix, his name. <laughs> Fred has said I got brought back a lot of regards from New York for you. Fred oh. Allen, want to say hello to you? Oh, fine. Herb Schreiner. Yeah. Oh, and all okay. Of <laughs> you know, we, I want you to know, too, that all of us watch your show every week in New York. And I think you're doing a wonderful job. And if you're ever in New York, Red, and I know you're coming on soon. That's right. I'll you ought to drop over and be on our show, boy. Well, that's a date for sure. By the way, you know, I bumped into your sponsor the other day. No. Yeah, I got hit by Lincoln. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I saw those new Lincolns, and they're really wonderful, you see. Listen, I, you've got a good product, too. I'll make a, I'll make a deal with you. What is it? You send me a Lincoln, and I'll send you a bottle of Geritol. <laughs> you throw on a cup of coffee, and you got yourself a deal. <laughs> You know, Red, I, I want to take this up with you because you've had a lot of experience out here. We're thinking of bringing our show out to California. Oh, what are you going to call it? The uh, Toast of the Smog? <laughs> <laughs> what I would like to find out, or you, you can advise me on it, is how the audience out here would react to me live on a stage. Oh, well, uh... And you know that was done without a without a without a cue card. It, uh, <laughs> well, I'll tell you, this is a typical California audience. I'll tell you what. Why don't you pretend that this is the toast of the town, and you take over and uh, and uh, and make out like it's your own show right now, and find out for yourself. Is that all right? Certainly. Go right ahead. All right. It's all yours. Right ahead. You know, that's a very that's a real nice guy. To let me do this. It's very very unusual, certainly. I seem to be on comic shows these past couple of days because I was on Jackie Gleason in New York. He broke his leg. And now I'm out here and I'm with the great redhead. And I'm certainly out here in Hollywood. 
There are a lot of celebrities. In our show in New York, we have made a feature of introducing celebrities in the audience. And it brings into homes the faces of people that they're acquainted with. It sort of amplifies the whole scope of the show. Sitting out here tonight is one of the great stars of Hollywood, Dick Powell. Dick, where are you seated? Dick, can you stand up there and take a bow? Hiya, <laughs> Richard. Now, Dick's next picture, which he's just completed, is Susan Slept Here. It was produced by the daughter of a very dear friend of mine, one of the great newspapermen of our country. The mother's name, of course, is Luella. The daughter's name, Harriet Parsons. All right, would you stand up and let them see you? <laughs> you know, I spot somebody out there in the audience that we've missed a great deal in New York because he filled a particular niche in the CBS programming section, you know, or the network section, rather. When he was in New York, he did a show out of there. But he's got so much dough, he quit us. He came back out here to lull in the sunshine. Ken Murray, would you stand up, please? <laughs> Hi, you, Ken. Ken is just working on a production now. Where were you with the Bing Crosby Enterprises? How have you been, Ken? Fine. <clears throat> we had a couple of dancers from the coast on our show, and they're here tonight. There are MGM stars. We've never had anybody quite like them on our stage. Marge and Gower Champion. <laughs> Incidentally, when are you coming back and play out that other date with us? <laughs> All right. When I was writing sports, one of the greatest All-Americans ever came out of the Big Ten Conference was the chap I'm about to introduce. He was the all-time Michigan star, Tommy Harmon. Tommy? Sitting with him are two other athletes. I'm going to ask them to stand up. Paula G. Meyer, the national diving champ. And Norm Van Brockman, the Ram. Now, right in line with all of these champions here, there's a celebrated champ out here from the East. He came out here some years back with Fiddle the Barber. And there's a whole flux, trans flux of Eastern athletes to the coast, and I'd like you to meet him. Cauliflower McPug. Oh, yeah. Here he is, right here. Come up here, Cauliflower, and talk to you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Oh, watch the hand, watch the hand, boy. Good. <laughs> Cauliflower? Yes? Welcome to the Ed Sullivan Show. <laughs> yeah, well, don't rub it in. <laughs> now, Cauliflower, there are a lot of athletes here tonight. Tell, tell all of us, how do you keep in shape? Oh, am I keep in shape? I do a lot of work down at the gum. <laughs> the gym. The gym. <laughs> I, uh, 24 hours a day, I'm training. Uh, when do I sleep? Mm -hmm. When I'm fighting in the ring. <laughs> well, I know you're always in perfect condition. Oh, yeah, far. good condition. Because you do keep a strict training schedule. Oh, a strict, right? oh, strict, yeah. Do you drink? Oh, no, no, no. Smoke? No, I don't move. Go around dancing with the gals? No, and you know that's tougher than fighting. <laughs> now, Paul, tell us about your next fight. Well, I got a big fight coming up on television. I get $15 in funeral expenses, you know. <laughs> fight on television? Yeah, my manager got it all fixed up for me. This is going to be a good one, boy. A real television natural? Who's your opponent? Betty Frenette. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Ed? I have never been able to win a fight so I could say on television or on radio, hello, Ma. Walk up to a microphone and say, hello, Ma. It's always been my ambition that it's hello, Ma. Do it right now. Let me have that microphone. Do it here. right now? Yeah. I can. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm sure you folks are all familiar with those desperados of the old West, 
Jesse James, the Dalton boys, and Billy the Kid, but what you probably didn't know is the, the most dangerous barman of them all was a man named Deadeye. Suppose we turn back the pages of history and see if we can find Deadeye in his favorite hangout, the Golden Nugget Saloon. <laughs> Got no sense, but I don't care. They may or may not mean offense, but I don't care. You see, I'm sort of independent of a clever race descendant. My star is on the ascendant. That's why I don't care. Oh, I don't care, I don't care what they may think of me. I'm happy, go lucky, and say I am lucky, so jolly and carefree. I don't care, I don't care if I do get the mean and stony stare. If I'm never successful, it won't be distressful, cause I don't care. Sure. 
I told those boys we needed lines here, but they said this would take care of it. Well, here's <laughs> Mighty dry gin. Pretty hokey, but even I ain't gonna tell that joke. <laughs> oh, come on now, did I? I ain't seen you for six months. What have you been doing? Here it comes, folks. <laughs> Ask me again. All right, I ain't seen you for six months, did I? What have you been doing? Six months. <laughs> <laughs> Never be a success. There's too many moving cars. <laughs> because I ain't wearing that dress. Mm. <laughs> Say, gal, <laughs> why don't you and me go for a little ride out on the range tonight? Well, why the range? Why, because out there seldom is heard a discouraging word. <laughs> Give us a kiss, gal. Who's with you? I got, hmm? <laughs> oh, come on, gal. Dad, I, you don't kiss like you used to. Well, I know. The rains came early this year and took all of the curl out of my plucker. <laughs> hey, Dad, I. Yeah? Keep your hands off her. She's my girl. Yeah, you wouldn't say that if you were down here. I'm up here. So. Well. But you gotta die on another network. <laughs> Anytime a prop gets a bigger laugh than me, it's gotta go. <laughs> Did you have to shoot him? Yep. I could have starved him to death, but it wasn't quite as visual that way, you know. <laughs> I knew! I knew! Sneak 
one of these up your sleeve. <laughs> when I was a small, puny boy, puny, that's a small horse. <laughs> when I was a small, puny boy, <laughs> I used to build myself up playing solitaire with these things. I'm getting tired. One, 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 one more. more. Well, you deal them. I'm getting tired. Yeah, it looks like an idiot boars from Las Vegas, don't it? Well, let's see. <laughs> All right. Anybody open? I open with five dollars. Five dollars? I'm staying. I'll raise you ten. Yeah, well, I'm staying too. And I'm going to raise this dry back here. <laughs> Twenty-five. <laughs> How many cards do you want? One. One. How many cards? None. How many? Okay, please. Well, yeah. I'll take five. Just <laughs> 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 so happen to have them. Right here. <laughs> okay. What you got? I have a flush. Full house. Four kings. I win. I got a royal flush. Ten of hearts, jack of hearts, queen of hearts, king of hearts, and the ace. <laughs> I forgot to tell you, there's one in every crowd. You know. <laughs> Indians! Indians! I think the Indians are coming. Run for your life! He thinks the Indians are coming. <laughs> Good heavens! The town is surrounded by Jeff Chandler. <laughs> we'll hold out, but first, we're going to have a little intermission. Bring in prisoner. your social life. Oh, a pony Indian, eh? Sit down. See the three things. That we make pow wow, then we kill you. Oh, I get it. Then it's pow wow right in the kitchen. Right? <laughs> yeah. Boy, you'd have a nice little collection here. Anybody I know? <laughs> Sam. <laughs> what happened, Sam? <laughs> Don't tell me that you got Shaja Gabor too. <laughs> Cure for dandruff. Three smoke pipe, you make peace with spirits. Good. Wait. Put on filter. Screen out irritants. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what are you smoking, mucklucks? Quiet! <laughs> Time for you die. Oh. Time for take scout. Uh. Time for beanie. <laughs> I should have taken the Indian's part. I can see that now. <laughs> Don't kill me. I'm too young to die. I'm too old to die. I'm at that awkward age in between. <laughs> Look, I'll do anything for you. Please, Chief. I think you'll watch your stuff. <laughs> Please, Chief. Don't kill me. See, I'm stalling till the, uh, till the soldiers get here. <laughs> Please don't kill me, Chief. Uh, me spare your life on one condition. How's that? You join tribe, marry my daughter. Me become an Indian? Yes, you join tribe, me give you big title. Oh? Call you Crazy Legs, All-American Indian. <laughs> should have taken the Indian's part. Yes. Come in, brave. Oh, don't burn me at the stake. You come. No, chop my head off. Yeah. Oh, oh, a hot steak's better than a cold shot, I guess. <laughs> Ain't this exciting? I know hokey, but exciting, huh? <laughs> carry on, boys, carry on. Come my daughter and see white man die at stake. Yeah, kids, I got a lot of steak. Well, <laughs> bangles, <laughs> bevels, and beads. <laughs> Brothers, you dance of death. Dance of death, kids. Too bad I'm tied up, kids. <laughs> Fire! Bring on the torch for the fire! 
Go scalp a prop, man. He's too soon. <laughs> 